located in Seattle, the West Duwamish Greenbelt is the largest remaining forest in the city, covering over 800 acres of land with a very old and rather strange past. The Greenbelt is an important aspect to Seattle's history and should be protected at all costs. Human history in this green space began over 2.5 thousand years ago. Duwamish ancestors built longhouses above and around the Duwamish River. As early as 500 AD, a village called Tolaltu was located on the east side of the Greenbelt. The people in this area lived primarily off of salmon berries, salal, fiddleheads, shellfish, and most importantly, salmon. Next to the Greenbelt, another village known as Ha'apus was right along the river and still remains a significant location for the Duwamish tribe today. In 1855, the Treaty of Point Elliot was signed, promising multiple tribes reservations and fishing rights. The Duwamish, among a few other tribes, were not given what they were promised. The tribe was forced to move to other tribes' reservations, several of which were longtime competitors and rivals. Among other tragedies, roughly two-thirds of the tribe's population was wiped out due to introduced diseases, and later, in 1893, the village of Ha'apus was burned to the ground. Duwamish Longhouse and Cultural Center, behind me, was planned and built on the location of the village Ha'apus. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. To this day, the tribe is not recognized by the federal government and has been fighting for acknowledgement since the treaty was signed. In the late 1800s, most of the land on West Seattle's peninsula was purchased by the Puget Mill Company. This mill brought a large amount of workers and residents, and not long later, most of the forest on the peninsula was completely wiped out, including most of the Duwamish land. Approaching the 1950s, Congress authorized the military to create something called the Alaska Communications System. Essentially, the ACS was a bunch of cables and telegraph lines covering over 3.5 thousand miles. Important messages such as General MacArthur's demand for the surrender of the Japanese in World War II were spread thanks to the ACS. But what does this have to do with the Greenbelt? Right underneath my feet is a massive underground bunker covering 7,000 square feet. Surrounded by the Duwamish Greenbelt, locals refer to this as the T-137 Mystery Bunker. So why the mystery? Turns out, it's incredibly hard to find out exactly what went on inside. Information is very scarce due to documents that are either missing, destroyed, or confidential. The bunker acted primarily as a base for the ACS, located next to a powerful radio tower used for communications with Alaska. However, this wasn't the only purpose for the bunker. E. Donald Thomas won a Nobel Peace Prize for his groundbreaking research on bone marrow transplants. But before the prize was won, human experiments were being conducted in the bunker to learn more about marrow transplants. Details on the experiments are pretty much impossible to find, leading to many rumors of paranormal activity and spottings of cryptid-like creatures. We may never know for sure what went on in the bunker, but it certainly played a strong role in Seattle's history. The city of Seattle planned to build a freeway through West Seattle called the Soundway. This road was planned to go straight through numerous parts of the Great Belt. The Department of Energy bought property and set up service routes, such as this one, to provide sand and gravel for construction of Soundway. In the 80s, portions of the property intended for Soundway were designated as Greenbelt by the City Council. However, this designation was not permanent, and roughly 10 years later, a legal battle began. In 2003, the city estimated that about 39 homes could be built on the environmentally critical areas of the Greenbelt purchased for Soundway. Many people opposed this plan and involvement in keeping Soundway property as part of the Greenbelt began. In 2005, thanks to key players such as the Nature Consortium and Nancy Whitlock, the mayor's office announced the property would be saved for green space. Speaking of the Nature Consortium, this organization is the leading figure in restoration for the Greenbelt. Along with students in the Landscape Horticulture Program at South Seattle Community College, the Nature Consortium has been working for years to restore active trees and shrubs in the Greenbelt. Because of logging, gravel mining, and sound away, a lot of the Greenbelt's habitat has been degraded. The organization works to remove invasive species, fix erosion, fertilize soil, and plant native trees and shrubs. They've managed to plant over 10,000 trees and more than 13,000 shrubs and plants. A contributor to preserving the green space is the Seattle Chinese Garden. Located between South Seattle Community College and the green space, this garden was started in the early 90s as a bridge between Seattle and China. 
The 4.6 acre garden is home to hundreds of plant species, from China and Seattle alike. Volunteers work every day to protect the garden and its surrounding forest. There are many reasons to protect this sacred space, whether to preserve its intricate history or simply because it acts as a natural barrier between neighborhoods such as my own and the pollution of the Duwamish waterway. Thousands of species of both plants and animals, beautiful hiking trails, and history dating back thousands of years. This space should remain protected for the years to come. Thank you for watching.